You're listening to Saturday with Ted on News Talk 1010. That's the music of the Sugar Devils, and uh, you guys are going to love this. Well, when I say you guys, the people here, I can't really feed the people outside the radio station. But you can do it yourself. Lou Dog Southern Barbecue and uh, Daryl Souza joins us. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Thanks for having me back. Uh, thank you for bringing that... Um, Meaty beans is what, what, do you, what do you call it? <laughs> the meaty beans, yeah. Well, they are what, what's addictive. in there? A whole lot of meat and some beans and some extra secret stuff I can't tell you about. Got it. There's good. some beer in there as well. Some Damn, it's good. Damn, it's good. <laughs> I, I, I caught your actor in between, man. Wow. You were just had your nose in oh, the beans. Oh, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And I had to, I went to take a rib yeah. to bring a rib over to Mike and, uh, and, and it just fell off the bone. Really. You know, talk about that. It's a good um, way to pick it up. Well, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Didn't fall on the floor. It just <laughs> fell off the, onto the onto the foil there. <laughs> and then there's some pulled pork sandwiches here. When were you, when were you guys here? We were here. Was it a year? A year. Uh, yeah, more than a year. Yeah, ago. more than you. Yeah, it's been a busy year. How's business? Oh, it's crazy. We uh, we opened our second location at the Ryerson University campus. Great place. Yeah, it's great. It's a two floor campus pub with the downstairs sandwich shop open till 4 a.m. and the upstairs bar with live music and open mic nights and a big patio in the back. So it's been a, a great uh, addition to the Ryerson community. I mm-hmm. heard you talking about the uh, the Mattamy Athletic Center. Mm-hmm. So we do a lot of stuff with them as well. Uh, Jeff here uh, hosts some of the uh, the athletic games and we sponsor the, uh, the Lou Dogs Row of the Game and the Noisemakers and things like that. Right. So it's, it's great. I also teach marketing at Ryerson University. Do you? Yeah. So it's been a. a a good uh, community, you know, and, and me and my partner, Sean, who was here last time, uh, we actually met going to Ryerson University. Mm, so basically anybody in your class who wants to pass, we know where they have to go to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> where are you eating lunch, buddy? <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> yeah, it's, and it's, you know what, it's a great case study for the, uh, for the marketing concepts. I teach marketing 101, so uh, every, every concept that I talk about in class out of the textbook, I refer to a Lou Dog's kind of case study mm-hmm. so that they, it's easy to understand we're talking about barbecue and blues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, the Sugar Devils, where did you meet these guys? I met the Sugar Devils, um, I guess two years ago now. Um, Drew came in, uh, the drummer, and, uh, he had a, a CD and a demo. And, um, you know, when I heard it, it was just screaming the, uh, Southern culture that, uh, is very important to the Lou Dogs brand. So we, uh, became good friends with them and they are incredible musicians. Like at Lou Dogs, we have, um, you know, top shelf musicians. We have Juno winners that play weekly. And uh, the Sugar Devils just blow our socks off every time. Now, w- this is at your main location. Uh, keep both both locations, but King Street is definitely the hub for the uh, right. for the for the culture. And uh, so, since then, every uh, Mardi Gras, every anniversary party, every big party that we throw, uh, we have the uh, you know six piece, sometimes twelve piece uh, <laughs> Sugar Devils, <laughs> and and they're all over the place. I mean, you have saxophone players standing on tables soloing, and Drew takes his drum right to the middle of the floor, and well, it's it's really a New Orleans vibe in there when when they're there, and it's it's great for uh, for the for the culture. Well, you know, Rob's been playing the Beaches <coughs> Festival since he was three. It's amazing. They they are so honest incredible. to God. <laughs> He's been on the festivals since he was just uh, a zygote. Yeah, they are very very. <laughs> <laughs> A what? A zygote. <laughs> What's a zygote? Well, that's just Why am I the only one who didn't get the joke? I believe it's an embryo. <laughs> it's an embryo. Oh, okay. He'd been there. Uh, he was there with a flute when he was like, uh, like a pan flute or something when he was like <laughs> <laughs> playing Sam Fear hits. You know, I, have, mom I had this him. problem with him every week. I don't know <laughs> how much I believe. How much He's is, a walking is, thesaurus. <laughs> how much is exaggerated? How much is complete BS? Yeah. I have no idea. Oh. When, when did you open uh, your place on King Street? King Street was April 2009, uh-huh. and uh, then the Ryerson location opened in... Most uh, times it will open. Well, I'll just wait for a recession to hit, and then it'll open up. It, it has been a challenge, for yeah. sure, uh, and it's been a... You know, everybody says the restaurant business is tough, and it, it really is. Um, if I wasn't uh, pushing brand and, and uh, 
kind of an expansion model, it, it would be a very tough restaurant or, or tough business to be in if you just had one independent restaurant. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's been a lot of fun though. Um, you know, today we're here, last time we were here just with the barbecue. Today we're here with our friends from the Sugar Devils, but also we brought our, um, our black lager, which we are launching, Ludog's Black Lager. We've always had a Ludog's Lager from our friends at Sleeman's, and now we've partnered with our friends from the Six Pints Molson Brewery. And uh, it's, it's on the Beer Academy on Victoria Street, and we're going to be launching this Ludog's Black Lager on March 1st where you can come in and get a pint of Ludog's Black Lager, uh, half rack of ribs, and a coleslaw, and take the glass home with you. And uh, it really pairs ex- excellent with, with ribs. Well, so then, then why aren't you offering me some? Well, here it is right there, bud. <laughs> <laughs> there's I, some I ribs and there's some I ribs and he didn't say anything. There's some ribs and there's some black lager. Oh, I'll just hit the rib you. right here, man. Cheers. There you go. Yeah. Cheers. Oh, thanks, man. And the, the, I, I did some catering at the Beer Academy in November. And That's it's, nice. Oh, yeah. And I'm not a dark beer kind of guy, but when I had that, that's easy drinking and it pairs excellent with, uh, with ribs and barbecue. It's actually quite smooth. Very smooth. Very, very smooth. Thanks, thanks for, for jumping in there. There Appreciate you go. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Takes the mic over to say it's actually very smooth. Moves the mic back. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the sugar devil me. seal of approval. There you go. That is very good. Yeah. Oh, so the, the rib black... is kicking over here. There it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a perfect match, and we're excited to launch the Black Lager as part of our drinks. Uh, the, the other drink that we did launch this year was our, our Ludog Smoked Lemon Southern Tea, which is made w- from our, uh, with our friends Jack Daniels. We have a Jack Honey product in there mm-hmm. with some lemon juice that we smoke in-house. We smoke the lemons, and uh, it's a little secret recipe, and it is delicious, and it's definitely very, very good for the patio. And it's most definitely my new favorite drink. Absolutely. <laughs> tell yeah. the world. It's so it's, good. It's easy <laughs> drinking, and it is uh, a great... So the, the, the concept, basically, is when you come into Ludog's, uh, we'd like to offer you our Ludog's lager, our Ludog's black lager, or our smoked lemon southern tea. And if you don't want any of that, you can have anything else. But uh-huh. I think we've got the bases covered now. So essentially, this this is Jack Daniels, and you add the other ingredients to make it what it is. That's right. Actually, we invented this drink before Jack Daniels had Jack Honey. They had we were started the drink with a, a shot of honey liqueur and a shot of Jack Daniels, and then they came out with the Jack Honey product, and we said, "Well, wow, that's perfect." So we mm. just use that. So have you added anything to your menu since we uh, last chatted? Um, just the drinks mainly. Uh, yeah, but we any, have, any food? Uh, we have some deep fried pickles, which sell really well. We uh, we added a pulled pork nachos, which sells really well as well. And um, pulled pork's everywhere now. We, you know what? It's uh, we were a little bit ahead of the trend, which is nice. And uh, I think we've we've really perfected. Then the beauty of Southern barbecue is we can uh, serve mass amounts of people with little to no effort. We do a lot of concerts and special events around Toronto. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also <laughs> actually have a, a food truck coming in the spring, which should. Uh, Oh, good. Yeah, uh, the food truck trend is around, and uh, yeah, we, we've partnered with a, a marketing company who's going to provide a, a Mercedes Sprinter for us free of charge. Oh, cool. As a, as a kind of a you partnership. You know, it's, it, it's, it's, and it's about time we started getting those kinds of things in the city. Because yeah, I think the municipality... Every other city has them, and for some reason we're sitting here on yeah, our thumbs there, and our there nose. Yeah, there is still some gray line around what you are, like, can and can't do with food trucks, and uh, as long as you're on private property, and I know there's there's parking lots all around the city that are now offering food trucks a place to serve lunch mm-hmm. um, for a small fee, obviously. Sure. Um, so I don't, I don't know how it's going to play out, but, uh, you know, we'll have a truck and we'll have uh, big speakers blasting the blues outside and it'll be fun. Good stuff. Lou Dog Southern Barbecue and uh, the music provided by Sugar Devils. You'll hear a little bit more of that when we come back. 12.15 right now at News Talk 1010. Let's check Time Saver Traffic now. It's Saturday with Ted on In-Depth Radio. News Talk 1010. Way down south when the hour got late I spot through the window some chocolate cake I walk right in, yelling, played it up And when I walked on out, I, I was dead, dead stuck He gave me sticky fingers He gave me sticky fingers He gave me sticky fingers And I still want another bite Later on that night, I met a dark-eyed man Who gave me sweet smoke with his left hand Red eyes smiling as he stayed out of sight He said, take a talk of that and you will feel all right he gave me sticky fingers Welcome back to the program. The lunchtime it is and uh, we're chomping on Lou Dog Southern Barbecue food. And you're listening to the music of the Sugar Devils at the same time. Um... I'm trying to figure out what it is that uh, that just burned my mouth in a good way. 
Uh, Daryl D'Souza <laughs> is from is from uh, Lou Dogs. I, I, it, it's potato salad. Yeah, the potato, potato salad, salad <laughs> usually doesn't have a kick like that to it. Yeah, we're all about flavor at Lou Dogs. So oh. there's uh, there's some Dijon mustard in there and some grainy mustard, and uh, yeah, a little sinus clearing. It's very good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. As as is the brisket, by the way, on the little uh, the little slider bun. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we're uh, actually doing a bunch of uh, midnight wedding buffets, but with the sliders yeah. as well. The slider station buffets, and at midnight, it's amazing too. Sure. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just perfect. It's just the perfect uh, midnight food for wedding, and mm-hmm. the sliders is a, a nice uh, bite size. Mm-hmm. And it's always fun to see people with what, barbecue sauce on their on their ties and whatnot. And that's whatnot. what people hang for at the events. That's at it, any yeah. event, they come out with all these little hors or, or d'oeuvres yeah. and stuff, yeah. but they wait for the sliders. Yeah, that's right. You yeah. have impressed if you yeah. have sliders. That's it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it is true. It's true. Now, do, you, do you serve the, uh, the, the meaty beans? We do. Because I'm, what is this? This is like um, a pork fat or something. Right? There's pork belly in there, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of pork belly and a whole bunch of. It's a secret recipe that I mean, my my uh, partner and chef everything's Sean, secret. Let's be well, honest. Sean's a genius. Sean is the type of guy that just throws a bunch of stuff in a pot. He doesn't measure. My, part of my biggest challenge over the last four years was trying to get Sean to start measuring stuff so that we can reproduce it. Mm-hmm. Uh, because Sean operates on the fly. So in, in year one, that was my my full time job was trying to get him to uh, standardize the recipes because he's he's a uh, Kind of a natural at creating these flavors. Yeah. Well, because the problem is somebody eats it and they, they think this is great and they come back two weeks later and they want to have the same thing again and it tastes slightly different. Yeah, that's right. So we've been able to, over the last couple of years to uh, to standardize everything now. I know with two locations, uh, you know, it's moving in the right direction. So Are you seven days a week? Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, at the Ryerson location, we're open till 4 a.m. seven days a week. At the King Street location, we're open till 4 a.m. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And I'll tell you, this food is good, but this food is better at 3 a.m. Yeah, it's it's yeah. delicious. You get a lot of people from the entertainment district popping by after. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. and the, and the Ryerson community is is great for the late night eats. It's it's a, it's a fun it's a fun atmosphere. I mean, especially in the King West uh, area, um, when people are finished with the nightclubs and whatnot, they can come back to Lou Dogs and uh, and really just kind of be human again. And, and take that, <laughs> take that deep breath. Take the and high heels off. Try and just to get relax. Their, try to get their hearing back. Yeah, I mean the big, the biggest exactly. <laughs> but the biggest seller uh, late night, three a.m. is our is our mighty lutein. The lutein is our pulled pork poutine. Yeah. We didn't bring any today because it doesn't hold well for delivery. But the the lutein is definitely the uh, the most famous <laughs> and life changing meal at three a.m. Are you thinking of uh, expanding even more? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We're looking. Uh, we're just because fine you know to- there's that fine line between. Uh, uh, we've gone too far. Now, um, now it's turned into factory food. True, and we won't let that happen. And that's the beauty of barbecue. Uh, once you once you nail the process, mm-hmm. it it is um, easy to be consistent. Easier than if you were you know cooking to order because right. you know we smoke twelve hours for pork and we toss it in the dry rub. And it's going to be consistent. Uh, How about your brisket? How long do you, do you smoke that? For? Yeah, somewhere between eight and fourteen hours. That's a Sean Smith question. <laughs> I stay out of that. And he's not <laughs> out of those you. details. <laughs> he's not telling you. What is this here? This is our smoked lemon Southern tea. That's uh, that is fabulous. Have yeah, you tried this? Try this oh. drink here. This oh my goodness! Is the summertime beverage that's who, who made this? So Sean in case, Smith in case made, I have to uh, oh, Jeff, lawn, la- launch a lawsuit. No. There's, no, <laughs> there's no alcohol in this or what? There is two shots of Jack Honey in that. So it is a double okay. drink in a pint glass that goes down very, this, very quickly. Ted, we finish the show. <laughs> <laughs> so Jeff, and the career at the same time. <laughs> Jeff Coles are... That's uh, really... Uh, this would be a killer uh, wow. hot afternoon drink. Oh, on the patio. That pint glass will go down in less than five minutes, and it's yeah. very dangerous. And, it's then, a, and then about ten minutes later, you go down with it. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad yeah. you brought this up, It's man. amazing. You know, so like, like I said, Sean, Sean invented the drink uh, about three years ago before Jack Honey existed, and then we were on Dragon's Den, actually, last May. How did that work out? That was interesting. It was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, great people, and, and obviously, uh, I can't tell you what happened. Well, um, and what were you pitching them? We were pitching for uh, national expansion and just more or less uh, a strategic partner. So I looked over at uh, at Jim and I said, look, I'm here for you. (laughs) And, uh, you know, I'll give you 5% for free. I I just want your Rolodex. I just want to be able to expand nationally without Mm -hmm. having to make those contacts myself. Mm -hmm. And it it went well. It was fun. And But one of the things that happened was um, we served this drink, which was our smoked lemon southern tea, and the dragons loved the drink. And the next day, Jack Daniels or Brown Foreman Canada had coincidentally asked me to go speak at their national sales conference because uh-huh. I'm a, I'm a uh, very vocal retailer, uh, pushing brand and, and the Jack Daniels brand is a very close part of ours. Right. So they asked me to come on and they said, so what, what do you want as a retailer? And I said, well, you know, I took your Jack Honey product 
in my drink on national television yesterday. Um, so what I want is a marketing partner um, to really drive drive this drink home because it is delicious. Uh, it's a perfect match between our smoked lemons and, and everything else that we do with it and their Jack Honey product, which they've just recently launched. So with that, uh, you know, the, the Dragons also enjoyed the drink and, uh, you know, there's some legs here and I'm, and I'm exploring some opportunities to even possibly put this in a can. And uh, I think that would be great for cottages and boats and, and you know, that's well, sort of thing. Well, look what happened with, uh, what, what was the first one of those that, that took off uh, probably 10, 15 years Mike's ago? Hard Mike's Hard Lemonade. Oh, yeah, Mike's Hard Lemonade. Actually, I remember one summer going up to the cottage, stopping at a liquor store, and all they had to do 12 cans left. That was it. That's yeah. it. And I was going to get like, you know, 24, and I said, can you give me another 24 from the back? That's it, sir. You know, it's funny you mentioned that. it's a Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, I'm thinking, or 11.30, I'm like, what? (laughs) Well, you know, it's it's easy drinking, and and, you know, it's funny you mentioned Mike's Hard, because the consultant that I'm working with to build a business plan to put this Southern tea into a can is the guy who started Mike's Hard Lemonade. Right. And he's living the life out in Whistler now, and uh, he helps me with uh, building the business case, and I'm right now just pulling together the rest of the pieces, the investors and the the co-packer to try to get this thing moving. And, right. uh, but I, I think there's a market for it. I mean, there seems to be a huge push for, uh, let's say beer alternatives for the summer. Coors Light Iced Tea tried something, Bud Light Mojito tried something, uh, sales of cider are going up. So I really do think there's a market for this and as a c- consumer demand, uh, especially into the summer. So, right. and then was it didn't Budweiser do, uh, like yeah, a, a lime or something? Yeah. Lime Mojito. They, they've done all sorts of stuff to get creative. And, and right. I really think that this is the perfect match with, uh, you know, I think the smoked lemons go a long way and it's definitely speaks to the, uh, the Lou Dog's culture. And it's not a ladies drink. Well, it, it is a well, ladies' drink, know, and that's why it's well, dangerous. I, I would ask a lady here. Yeah, yeah ask Irene. It's, it's I would n- say gender neutral. <laughs> this is. De- I mean, I wouldn't say it's specifically a ladies' drink, but I am a lady, and I enjoy drinking this drink <laughs> very much. <laughs> So I don't know when the I dra- like this drink too, but I used to be a lady. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when yes, the- he has. <laughs> see that two sips already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to see you finish that thing. That's, that's going to be dangerous. So uh, I don't. I don't know when the Dragons Den episode is going to air, or, or if it's going to air sometime before May, anyways. Hopefully, and uh, when, and if and when it does air, I will definitely um, be be supporting both restaurants with uh, unlimited Southern yeah. teas to get everybody. Uh, enjoying. Have you got a marketing, a big marketing campaign that you're going to be uh, launching? No, you know what? Right now, radio, it's very, television, yeah, magazines. I'm anything? actually a, a record producer friend of mine had his. He's working with a new country uh, artist, and they, they they put together a little jingle for a commercial uh, that's on SoundCloud right now. So it's 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 moving, but you know, it's still very early in the business case stage, and I'm still trying to get things uh, moving. And you know what? I, the, the restaurant comes first. I am focusing on the restaurant sure. first. These drinks are are a great way to expand the brand and the awareness and they are delicious products. So yes, yeah, they are. So, uh, you know, we'll see. And even the black lager is, uh, something that we are, uh, exclusive in the city. Uh, we're the only place you can, going to be able to get the Ludogs black lager, which is, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's just, these are the things that makes Ludogs special. Yeah. Cool. All right. We're going to break for, uh, for some, uh, updating of traffic around the city in a moment. And then we'll come back with Daryl D'Souza from Lou Dog Southern barbecue and some more music from the sugar devils right here in news talk 1010. It is 1230. Let's take a look at Time Saver Traffic. Saturday with Ted continues on News Talk 1010. the music of the Sugar Devils on News Talk 1010. And with me is uh, Daryl. They are here. And Daryl D'Souza is the co-founder of Lou Dog Southern Barbecue. There are two locations. Uh, one uh, at Ryerson on Gerard Street. And the other one is at uh, 589 King West, just east of Bathurst. I have been told by my crack producer that you like to do things like go on social media and say, first person to come in and start talking about our poor <laughs> po' boys or sing a song and get a free sandwich. Yeah, I, the free stuff calendar is something that I uh, I started 
two or three years ago now, and it's it's a pretty fun um, way to engage with the social media uh, Twitter followers and whatnot. Right. And uh, basically, it's just, you know, I give away something for free every day, and uh, sometimes I'll give away a free pound of chicken wings at 5 p.m., but to find out how to win the chicken wings, you have to uh, follow me on Twitter, and on Twitter every morning, you'll see something like, uh, come in and sing and do the chicken dance to win your free pound of chicken wings. <laughs> and uh, you know, at, at King Street, it's it's uh, it's well received by the advertising community and all the young professionals around King Street because they laugh at the tweets. But at Ryerson Community, the Gerard Street location, you have you know literally five or six students lining up to to compete <laughs> to to try to be the first one at sure. five p.m. Well, money's you know, money everything. To free them. food is free food. So yeah. and, and they really got, you know. So I've been able to ratchet up. The, now I now I have uh, promotions like um, make up and sing your version of the po' boy blues and uh, you know do it during our karaoke night on Tuesday night or do it during open mic or whatever. So you know you get people doing you know all sorts of fun stuff from jumping jacks, push ups, singing, sure. anything I can come up with really. So how many people are following you on Twitter? And, um, and what is your Twitter address? Uh, Twitter is at Lou Dogs. Uh, we also have another one that my uh, good friend behind me, Jeff Cole, manages at Lou Dogs Ryerson for the Ryerson community because mm-hmm. you know we've got a different different demographic for both. Um, so yeah, you know we've got a, a bunch overall at Lou Dogs and Lou Dogs Ryerson, maybe six thousand, seven thousand people. Uh, but it's it's not necessarily numbers for me. It's more the uh, the level of engagement. And how many people uh, will respond to my tweets, and how many conversations we can uh, get into with with our followers to really keep things interesting and uh, engage with the community because that's mm-hmm. what it's all about. Now, tell me uh, the, about the, the the Blue Jays care of the Young Professionals Committee. You join that? Yes, yes. I'm uh, honored and and uh, and very uh, very happy to be part of the Young Professionals Committee on uh, for the Jays Care organization. Now, the Jays Care organization is run by the uh, the organization the Toronto Blue Jays. And they basically give the um, at-risk youth in Toronto access to baseball. And uh, they had an incredible season last year where they they built, um, uh, they had a documentary called Diamonds in the Rough, and they built a, a team, and they sent a team down to the to the U.S. I watched a documentary that was, um, it was narrated by uh, Ricky Romero, one of the best pitchers. And, um, you know, it was amazing to me that... Um, the kid that was shy, and I think he was he was from Somalia, or he wasn't he wasn't from Canada. He just immigrated here. He was very shy. They put him on the on the baseball field, and this guy just came out of his shell. Before you knew it, he was he was a team leader. He was the guy, uh, you know, really really mm-hmm. pushing the rest of the team. And to watch this kid come out of his shell, actually, I was watching it at home. And another Twitter story, I tweeted at Jay's Care and at Ricky Romero, and I said, "Great job on this documentary called Diamonds in the Rough." You guys, I mean. It, brought a tear to my like this is this is what it's all about um and uh and then they retweeted and got back to me and whatnot and that's how i became part of this young professionals committee because Mm -hmm. of you know i really do believe that uh you know when you give uh youth an opportunity whether it's baseball on the other organization i'm involved in is uh music counts and that's owned by the junos and it's the same concept music counts puts instruments in the hands of of uh of students across canada and it's owned by the Junos, and they're they're looking to build awareness um, around the program. They have grants available, and they have Juno musicians uh, ready to support it. Jim Cuddy is a big uh, proponent of this. So uh, the concept is the same. If you give youth, uh, you know, music or sports, it keeps them out of trouble. And yeah, it, and it, sure. and it, you know, so that's and that's very near and dear to my heart. They need I, to be engaged. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And and you've got uh, front row seats uh, <laughs> at the Jays. I do have front row seats, uh, season tickets for the Jays, and how many? Uh, uh, I've got two. I've got a pair. So uh, I might, uh, you know, give you a pair. It looks like you... Ricky Romero. <laughs> <laughs> you can just walk out on the mound. Okay, t- you know, that's a compliment. Okay, tell Ricky, you, I'll tell Ricky you, that. Are you going to the, uh, to the home opener? I, I will be at the home opener. No, you know what? I teach Tuesday night, so I'm going to miss the home opener. Yeah. But I'll, I'll so find... So out in half an hour. He's Is there. that right? He's here. <laughs> yeah, Jeff will be there. Jeff will be there. What, what's your seat? I, I am uh, I am going down to uh, spring training, though, so I'm pretty excited about that. Oh, and cool. Yeah, it's... Uh, Have you, you know, been there before? Yeah, yeah. It's become a uh, annual thing now. I, I am we, we cater to the Blue Jays Clubhouse as well, and uh, I'm friends with a bunch of the guys. So it, 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 Here in uh, Toronto, you do? Yeah, yeah. We oh, cater really? To, yeah. So, it, you know, it's a great relationship. They're great to us. You mean um, they don't eat the food that everybody else eats? <laughs> no. Actually, J, J. Pierre and Sevilla uh, has his own meal on our menu. It's called the J. Pierre and Sevilla Special. It's nine ninety nine because he is number nine, and I'm very happy that he's back as and our, what as is our it? catcher. What, what is, what, what's it's, in the It's meal? what he eats every single time he's in. He gets a pulled pork sandwich, sweet potato fries, and a barbecue mayo, and, and a drink. And that's what he gets every single time he's he's in. And, uh, you know, there was a time, uh, you know, before he broke his hand, unfortunately, last year, or 
he, pretty much every time he came in for lunch, he uh, he hit a home run that night. And so we had a, a you know, oh, man. A, it was, and there was, there was one time where he ate lunch at Lou Dogs twice that week and he hit like four home runs in five games or something. And it was, mm. yeah, I, I mean, JP is a great guy and he's, he's a very community player as well. I mean, the, the, I mean, the team, I couldn't be happier for uh, what's happening for these young guys like, you know, JP and, and Ricky and Lowry and these, these young guys who are really in a great position this year yeah. to, to really take it's things. It's very exciting this oh, year. And you know what? Toronto deserves this. Our sports fans deserve it. Our city needs this. Okay. Um, yeah, we need some heart. We need some culture. We need. I mean, the Leafs are, are and the Raptors are playing well. Go figure. But yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> but here we are. You, the Jays are the real deal. They are the real you deal. Get Jose Reyes to come in. Yes, that yes. I haven't. I haven't met him yet. I haven't that met him yet. All, all begins and all began with the Argonauts. Remember that. That's right. That's right. Very and they true, are, though. They that won, is very they, true. They, they won the great cup. Sneaky win there. there. Yeah. You know? And you know what? The funny uh, to bring that back to social media again. The reason I met uh, JP. And the reason I know any of the Jays was uh, JP tweeted because he's a big, uh, big social media guy. Uh, he tweeted, "Where, where should I get uh, some, some lunch around the Sky Dome? I'm still new to the city." And there was like 17 people who responded and said, "Go to Ludogs, go to Ludogs." And you know, sure enough, JP walks in and and uh, you know, I sit down with him and chat, and then we come, you know, become some friends, and and then doors open from there. And it's it's really it's, it's a great story. I mean, social media just it, it, the story goes on and on and on. We yeah. had we had a fiasco with uh, a boy band called One Direction. They tweeted about us, and we had hundreds of 15 year old girls at both locations with <laughs> bears and flowers and cry <laughs> tears. And yeah, the, the much music brought me on for uh, an interview just uh, because One Direction tweeted, and we were gl- trending globally. Actually, it was and very, they tweeted very... saying that you need to go there because yeah. it's great food. Yeah, Jeff. Uh, Jeff served them when they come in, and uh, and they. Uh, you know they they yeah, said they love this. Uh, you insert this uh, lemonade uh, thing that's getting us no, hammered. They, they had a Ludo's no. lager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so Jeff, as Jeff said, uh, he, he said, uh, you know, if, if uh, they asked if you had a dessert, and Jeff said, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a brownie if you if you tweet about us, not knowing who they were. And then they tweeted when they left, and things went crazy. We were trending. This is the band you're the saying. The band, the two guys from the band One Direction. Oh, okay. And they, we were trending in Buenos Aires. We were trending in Australia. We were trending in the UK. Ludo- and, and the tweets I was getting up saying things like "Lou Dog's Barbecue is trending in Buenos Aires," and I'm like, "What? <laughs> what is that? What's going on here? <laughs> what is One Direction? What does this mean?" Uh, I've never even heard of One Direction. Oh, uh, they, uh, they are. They're you know big. what? Think, picture this: they are you know, boy bands have always been very, very powerful, mm-hmm. and now these are boy bands with Twitter. This is yeah, next yeah, yeah, level yeah. of power. Yeah. They got more power than Barack Obama. It's I'm sure it, it is amazing <laughs> what, uh, what what people are achieving with social media now. It's and, are, they, are they teaching uh, this in high school yet? Well, you know what I I I do. Uh, you know, I, I stick to the curriculum at Ryerson, but I also throw in a couple uh, classes on social media, and I focus on social media, tying the marketing fundamental concepts to social media, which isn't really in the textbooks yet. Uh, you know, formally, um, so that. It is everywhere, and yeah. and I just actually finished a TED a TEDx talk, a TEDx Ryerson U at Madame Athletic Center mm-hmm. uh, in November, so that should be uh, available online soon. And and basically, I, my whole TEDx talk was around the power of social media, building brand both online and off. All right, we're going to talk yeah. more about that. But we need to take a break. Yes, sir. You can hang around for a while. Hell yeah. Okay, well, we, you have to leave because Mike still wants to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're back with uh, with more. Stick around. Twelve forty five at News Talk ten ten. Time, 10, 10. 10. Time yeah. to save our traffic first. Thank you. You're listening to Saturday with Ted on News Talk 1010. Welcome back to the program. 1150 at News Talk, or 1250, sir, News Talk 1010. Lou Dog Southern Barbecue, uh, that's um, who's providing lunch today. Two locations for you on Girard, the Ryerson location, and also King Street West, just east of Bathurst. And let me tell you, uh, from what we've uh, sampled here from the... Uh, Meat and beans, meaty beans, whatever it's called, to the potato salad with a bit of a kick to it, and the brisket, and the ribs with the fall off the bone meat, and the pulled pork, you got to go. <laughs> so there is to it. And the vegetarian dishes were killing too, weren't they? <laughs> oh, man. Coleslaw, oh, man, that coleslaw. Oh, yeah, it's flying off you the You hit shelves. it, man, did you? <laughs> <laughs> It's still full. But potato salad is, still full. is veggie too. Potato salad is veggie. Well, no, I mean it's uh, yeah, yeah, yes. It's not that we didn't want that, but when you're surrounded by pulled pork and brisket and ribs, you know, organic I mean, sliders. Hello, you know. Yeah. It's easy to forget about the vegetables. 
Yeah, and remember that episode of The Simpsons when you're <laughs> talking about salad and Homer and you Bart are singing. You can't make friends with salad. You can't make friends with salad. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, the band, uh, the Sugar Devils, still playing um, at your place? They actually just played a killer Mardi Gras party for us. Uh, it was an industry party on Monday night, and they just blew the roof off, as mm-hmm. usual. And and you know what? We had uh, 18 different bars, uh, the staff from the different bars at our location um, in, in King West, and these guys just blow everybody out of the water. It's amazing. Everyone from the Orbit Room to the Hideout, all these these bars that have musicians. Mm-hmm. And uh, I tell you, Irene Torres and the Sugar Devils are my definitely top shelf number one pick. Back from uh, New Orleans? They are back. I'm going to let uh, Drew and Irene tell you about their trip because I'm excited about it myself. Yeah, we're fresh back from beautiful New Orleans. And, uh, it you was were there a- around during, during Super Bowl? Yes, we were. Uh, we, we drove down to Memphis originally to be part of the International Blues Challenge. We were there in Memphis for a couple of days mm-hmm. and then uh, drove to Louisiana, to New Orleans, our second home. It's quickly become our second home. We do love it there. So every once in a while, as soon as we can, we go out and recharge, right? Play a little bit, reconnect with our friends, and then yeah. come back. You gonna say something? <laughs> <laughs> Way to put just, the man on the spot. Well, just put a microphone in front of him, and he's, and he's staring at me. <laughs> we, uh, uh, I moved down there last year. Uh, oh, did for, you? For five months, and the band came down. We recorded half of the uh, the current album there, mm. um, and we featured a lot of uh, guests from from from. From the area, and and the new album is, is also featuring some great uh, New Orleans artists. Yes, and, we have Cornell Williams mm, uh, on bass, mm. and and he's straight out of New Orleans. Really great bass player. No, I mean the vibe of the, the buzz in the air must have been something with the Super Bowl going on. I mean, the place is always partying to begin with, but when you throw in the Super Bowl, wow! Yeah, they had an extra million people in the city, an extra million people. So million? Yes, yes. So That's it was. Why the shortage of power? I guess. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was quite quite packed, and uh, it really. Uh, brought the party to a, a whole new level. <laughs> oh my word, yes. I, I enjoyed seeing the women in the in the jerseys with the short uh, shorts. It was, it was really nice. <laughs> yes, we Do all did, it. Drew. We <laughs> all did. <laughs> I didn't know you were into culture. It, oh, was, yeah. uh, it was a really lovely experience because half the band had been there a few times, but there were, there were two members of the band that had never been there before. So we got to take them down to Bourbon Street and Frenchman and Got to show them all the sites and, and introduce them to the other bands, and it was a really, really wonderful experience. Hmm. Everybody that uh, that wrote about it and spoke about uh, the experience of going down, they just said that uh, New Orleans did an, an outstanding job. You know, with the exception of the 35 minutes of darkness during the game. <laughs> <laughs> was that Beyonce's just, set? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And well, the people were trying to blame Beyonce, saying, well, it was her fault. It was too fault. fabulous, it's just too fabulous. <laughs> the company screwed up that does the, uh, the, the lighting there. But I mean, everybody was just saying it was just it was terrific, just perfect. And now, and for some reason, now they're taking it to New York City next year in an open stadium in February, where it could be uh, like minus thirty. That'd be a pleasure, won't it? Wow! How stupid is that? That's not going to be fun. <laughs> Keep going down down south, or go out west, or anywhere where there's anywhere a dome. Where it's warm. Yeah, let them play in the warm. <laughs> or Winnipeg. The, the the Super Bowl parking lot parties are are half of the reason to go there. Yeah. yeah so minus party. fifteen. That's just gonna take all that away. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, exactly. Who's who's gonna be out there and in the parking lot when it's when it's that cold? Mm-hmm. You've seen the Bills games. Yeah. They're crazy. Well, it's Buffalo. <laughs> it's Buffalo. <laughs> well, it's Buffalo. Yeah, but Buffalo doesn't host the Super Bowl. No. Um, but they have tailgate parties. Yeah, and, but, and but icebergs. But they never play that late into the season. That's the thing. Well, they're pretty much out of it by the time January hits. Or before. Or, well, yeah, sometimes uh, on paper they're out of it while the sun is shining and people are in shorts. Yes, that's true, too. Let's, let's talk more about, um, 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 about this, uh, the social, social media and, and the opportunities that, that do exist there. And, and you're talking about this one this band, One Direction? Yep. Yeah, it's a boy, boy <clears> band. <throat> I'm sorry experience. I haven't heard of them, but I mean... Well, you know what? We were sorry uh, we didn't hear Clearly I'm either. not hip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, you know, it's an interesting experience. And, uh, you know, that's just... You know, whether it's becoming friends with the Blue Jays or or One Direction or, you know, several other examples. It just, it just, it continue, even beat on the show. I mean, Dan Jacobs, your guy, he found me on Twitter. And that's how, that's how we, um, you know, that's how the network grows. And that's how, and you know what, what I really love about it. it, it well, really, first of all, it's free. It's free. Absolutely. It's in my pocket at all times. And I pull out my phone and I, and really it's just connecting with people and, and, uh, 
it's not any different than text messaging. And what, what really fascinates me about it is uh, if I tweet with a stranger, like complete stranger, and then they tweet back and I tweet again, and then they come into the restaurant and I, I see them there and I say, oh, are you uh, at Dan Jacobs or are you at, you know, you're at Lou Dogs. Oh, yeah. We hug. We act, hey, you're that guy. And then before you know it, the, the, the barrier has come down and you feel as if you've, you know, exchanged phone numbers or, or really become close with this person who is, in fact, actually still a stranger. However, you've got this um, tie, this, this, this personality that you can identify a person with. Mm-hmm. And it, it accelerates the uh, relationship building. Which, in, in obviously, in the restaurant business is extremely important. One of, one of the things that I find, it, it's the same with, with Facebook, is there are people who have Facebook accounts. Who cares? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it, 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 well, you know, we had a really nice apple pie tonight for dinner. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still cooking. You know, you know really? what I find fascinating? You know, at my age, I'm uh, going to hang myself. <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh, oh, Retw- you're goodness. trending. <laughs> you want video? Of it. Well, you know what? A lot oh, of my man. friends are having having babies and things now, and obviously, there's pictures of newborns everywhere. Yeah. Uh, you know what fascinates me is is fast forward ten years or twenty years. Now these these babies' lives have been documented from the time they're in the womb until they're twenty years old. They're going to look back at their family album. Is all online. They're going to be twenty years old. It's true, though. Look, you know, but that's a that's a bit of an invasion of privacy, isn't it? You know what? These are the these are the times we're living in, and and this is, you know, I, you know, at at some point you can argue, yeah, let's just you know unplug. But I think that the benefits outweigh the uh, the risks of privacy, and and I mean, one of the things I talked about in my TEDx virus and you talk was uh, the fact that social media is literally changing our world, and it's not just a, you know a boy band having superpowers. But it, it's about, uh, you know, the revolutions we've seen in the Middle sure. East and in yeah. Egypt. And I mean, these things, uh, we are armed. We are, we are. We're a lot the, more open. You know what? There's power in numbers. And when everyone is connected at a global level. And one of the fascinating things that I saw in the, um, I was lucky enough to see in the uh, One Direction fiasco while we were trending globally, is these, these directioners, they call themselves. I saw tweets that, that said things like, directioners, we did it. We are trending globally. We did it. As a population, they, it was like watching a toddler learn to walk. They found their voice. They found their global connectedness in real time. Mm-hmm. And it, to my knowledge, it's never been done before. And it was a fascinating thing. Keep in mind the demographic. These are you know, 12 to 15-year-olds who are literally social media ninjas. They're born right. with, fa- you know, with, with smartphones in their hands. Well, Ted yeah. found his Occupy group that way. They- <laughs> 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 he don't know what he's occupying, but occupy he said it sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> occupy this. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and where are those Occupy people? Oh, we don't come out and occupy when it's cold. <laughs> anyway, um, Lou Dogs, uh, <laughs> Southern Barbecue, two locations for you. One on uh, 76 Gerard, it's at Ryerson location. And King Street West, just east of Bathurst. Great food. Um, great chatting with you again. Come on back great. again. Thank you very much Come for having us. Again. I appreciate you, it. Something else that you've got to drink. <laughs> 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 and, uh, all Thank the, you. Thank you for having us. All the best to the Sugar Devils as well. Your CD is uh, out now. That sounded great, guys. Uh, we have one disc out right now, and uh, coming March, we'll have our second uh, release. What's the website? Where can they get yep. this? Uh, thesugardevils.com. You can find all our information. All right. right good stuff.